Animations are cool, right? Yeah, except like there's a thousand ways to do it. So we're going to condense that huge list down to 10 animations for everyone. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. After watching this video, I want you to proudly eat that cupcake because you deserve it. Now, you may have seen some of these animations around like overshoot animations or bounce animations, but at the very least, let these animations fuel your mind for some future ideas and not that cupcake. Don't eat the cupcake, it has a family. Anyway, let's get started. All right, and starting off, we have a scale overshoot animation with a cupcake in space. Of course, it's the cupcake. And this is really easy to do. So what we'll do here is come here to a second, hit Astro and Keyboard for scale, and we'll add keyframe for this. Then go to the beginning of your timeline, set your scale down to 0%. So then you simply get a smooth animation like this. All right, awesome. And then we go past that second keyframe, and we can scale this down. And th what this is going to do is allow us to have an overshoot animation now that was very slow and it's all about raising the scale of the middle keyframe and i can move these last two keyframes in to speed it up and what i want to do is make the last keyframe an easy ease keyframe by hitting f9 on my keyboard and make the first keyframe an easy ease keyframe this way it'll be smooth and boom it just goes right in there uh, very simply and then of course you can copy the keyframes and then you can paste them at the end of your animation right click it go to keyframe assistance and click on time reverse keyframes and boom and then it goes away. So that's an overshoot animation. So next up, just like an overshoot animation, this is called a bounce animation where it just goes back and forth really quick. And this is very easy to do. So for this animation, we'll hit PR and keyboard for position and we'll hit shift T for opacity. All right, so we'll add a keyframe for position and we'll move this keyframe forward just by like, you know, maybe 12 frames. And we'll grab the X position or the Y position. You can do any size. So maybe we can actually go up, down, that's fine. So the animation is just gonna do this, boom, comes right up. And then we'll add a keyframe for opacity and we'll move the keyframe forward to that last keyframe there and set the opacity down to 0%. So it'll just fade in there, no problem. And what we wanna do is move forward by a few frames and move the position back downwards by, you know, a little bit more like halfway. Then move forward by a few frames and move it back up to the point and move forward by a few frames, bring it down, not as much as this, you know, last time you did it, and then we can move it back up. And then we want to make sure that we move these keyframes in maybe to be no more than one or two frames apart from each other. This way, it'll appear to be really quick. So as you can see, we have a quick bounce animation here and make all the position keyframes easy ease keyframes and you can also easy ease the opacity. And if you want, you can drag out the last keyframe by a little bit and I'll smooth it out. And now for our bounce animation lined up, it looks good. So for our third animation, I'm calling this a flip flicker, which is simply similar to the bounce animation. However, it's in 3D space. So the first thing we want to do is to make sure that our layer is a 3D layer. And then we can hit R on keyboard for rotation and we'll add a keyframe for X or Y rotation. Either one, those are good. I'll go ahead and add it for X rotation. And what we want to do is bring this keyframe forward in time, you know, to wherever we want the animation to be upright like this. And then bring the X rotation or the Y rotation vertically to the center. So usually about 90 degrees and then you won't be able to see it and it comes in like this. So this is only going to work if it's in the center of the composition. You can adjust the angle depending on where it's at in the comp. So as it comes in, we go to that second keyframe and we want to make sure that this is offsetted in the other direction by four, like by 50 degrees or so. So and you see, boom, it's offsetted. And as before, we'll knock it back you know, maybe to that negative degrees. We'll move it forward, back in the positives, and I'm obviously every time that we're flickering back, it becomes less intense. So we'll go ahead and set that down to zero. And in, in this case, let's make the first and last keyframes easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. And with the flip flicker animation, we can really bring an object in and hide it from a Z space perspective. So this next animation technique is pretty simple, but it is my favorite animation style, which is uh, creating a rotate scale ease. Let me show you. So we'll hit S and Shift R on keyboard to bring up scale and rotation, and we'll add a keyframe for those. We'll come here to the beginning of our timeline, and we'll set the rotation to 1x. So this will do a full rotation, and then we'll set the scale down to 0%. So now you get an animation like this, and it's pretty simple and slow, but we'll go ahead and bring the keyframes in by a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and grab both our keyframes and make them easy ease keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard. Then let's go to the graph editor, and we'll grab the scale parameter. We'll select that second point there, and we'll drag out our vertice all the way across. We'll click on rotation, and we'll grab our bottom vertice down here for the second keyframe and drag that across. Nice, nice slow down, a very good rotation scale ease. All right, so this is a really cool animation technique. This is called a boomerang bounce, really easy to do. 
Okay, so we have our object right here and we wanna bring up position, scale, and rotation for this. We'll add a keyframe for all three of these, move the beginning of our timeline, and we'll move our object in any direction that we want. I'll just go up and I'll set our rotation up to maybe past 360 degrees. Just create a nice boomerang effect and then set the scale down to 0%. So then you'll just have a very simple animation like this, but this is not what we're doing. We're doing a bounce. So we'll come here closer towards the end of the animation and we'll grab our position and drag your, you know, in my case, the Y position down past the center of the ending point, or this could be the X position, just overshoot it. And we can increase the scale. And then we can also uh, decrease the rotation to the negative value here. And then of course, let's go ahead and make the last keyframes easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 and the first keyframes easy, easy keyframes. So now you'll have a pretty dope boomerang uh, animation for your object and you, know, you can spread out the keyframes and adjust that, but it looks really awesome. All right, before we move on, I got to give a huge shout out to Animation Composer, uh, which has over a thousand emotion presets and is perfect for animating objects like we are. So right here we have Animation Composer extension right here in After Effects, and there's a thousand motion presets in here. I can go through the folders and we can preview every single animation before we apply anything. So it's very easy to use this. You select your layers that you want to animate in your timeline, and then you search for a motion preset that you want and apply it as in, and you can also apply it as out as well. Then you click on more tools and go to transition shifter, and you can quickly stagger your layers. And now with our animation presets applied, we have everything in here animating really quick and we're able to do this super fast. And there's also a pack of a thousand text presets as you can see we have applied to our main title. And animation poser is something I've been using for two years and I refuse to do any projects with a lot of animation without it. So if you want to check out Animation Composer, that link will be in the description. And if you do pick it up through our links, you will be supporting our channel. So thank you. All right, starting off the second half of our list, I have something called Crazy Rotation. So the first thing you need to do is make this a 3D layer. And then you hit R on keyboard for rotation. Add a keyframe for every rotation parameter. Move to the beginning of your timeline and just randomize the rotation for everyone. And then, of course, make them easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on your keyboard. And then hit S-Train keyboard for scale, and we can just do a very simple scale animation in from 0% to the full percent, and make it easy, easy keyframes. Boom, now we have a really cool, crazy uh, rotation animation. I, I know that was quite simple, but a really cool idea. All right, so the next one is called an anchor point flip, where we use an anchor point to flip our object. So, so what we'll do here is make this a 3D layer, and let's come up here and grab the pan behind tool, and grab the anchor point in the center of our object, and put it to one of the corners of uh, your layer. Then let's hit R and keyboard for rotation and hit shift S for scale. Let's add a keyframe for Y rotation and Z rotation. We'll move forward to the beginning of our timeline and we'll set our Y rotation to 180 degrees and our Z rotation to 180 degrees as well. Then we'll set a keyframe for scale, move that keyframe forward just by a little bit, maybe halfway mark and set the scale down 0%. And of course, make everything easy, easy keyframes. So now you have the ability to use the anchor point to rotate and animate in your objects. So this next one is going to be a spin animation from the center. And this is really awesome. So as you can see, our anchor point is right here in the center. And that's important. But first, what, what we need to do is hit A on keyboard for anchor point and bring up scale and rotation. All right. So we'll go ahead and add a keyframe for all three of these. Move to the beginning of our timeline. And we'll set our rotation to 2x. And then we'll bring our Y anchor point up and then set the scale down to zero percent and of course we'll make them all easy easy keyframes so now we have a very nice spin animation here for our object all right so for this next one is actually a combination of animating in and animating out at different anchor points and it's just a really cool idea so what we need to do is grab our pan behind tool here at the top and just drag this towards the bottom of your object then you can just hit astron keyboard for scale add a keyframe for it move it to the beginning of your timeline and set your scale down to zero percent so now your object will scale in from that anchor point and that's fine. But let's say we want to scale it away at a different point. All we have to do is go to edit split layer and we'll just move that anchor point to the other side of your object. And then you'll hit S and keyboard for scale and we'll delete the previous ones. And we'll go ahead and add a keyframe for scale and we'll move forward here and set it down to 0%. And of course, make all your keyframes easy, easy keyframes. So now you get this really unique animation where it scales in from one side and scales out from the other side. So you're able to easily flip the anchor point of your animation. All right, so for our last animation technique, I had to throw this in here or this tutorial would not be complete and that's animating along a path. So as you can see, we have a mask here and we're gonna be able to animate on it. So let me show you how this is done. So what we wanna do is say grab the pen tool here at the top 
and you can just have your layer selected, that's fine. And what we can do is click a point outside of our composition or anywhere we want and simply just draw the path that we want our object to take. So our animation should look something like this. Then what we'll do is hit M on our keyboard for mass path, copy the mass path, then hit P on your keyboard for position. Make sure you're at the beginning of your timeline. Click the word position and just paste those keyframes in there. And you can always make little updates there so you can grab like one keyframe, grab the selection tool and I can move this anchor point downward. And by grabbing each position point here, I can just readjust this animation as I see fit. This is a really quick way to animate on a custom path. And then of course, you might need to hit R and keyboard for rotation, add a keyframe for that and re-rotate your object as it animates through. So just keep that in mind. So now really quick, I have this object animated along a path really quick. And of course, everything's easy, easy keyframe. So that is a really quick and cool technique to finish this off. So that's our tutorial on creating these 10 animations. There's like so many out there. So, you know, these are just cool ideas that you can implement into your future work. And of course you do deserve that cupcake, but remember it has a family. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.